Good morning. My name is Al Schmidt. I'm president and CEO of the Committee of 70, um, uh, formerly a city commissioner in the city commissioner's office in uh, Philadelphia, responsible for running elections in the city and uh, know very well how important it is uh, that election day runs smoothly and that the most important people on election day aren't city commissioners or anything else like that. They are the people working on your local election board so that when you show up to vote, if you vote in person on election day, you're able to cast your vote uh, unobstructed and to make sure the process runs smoothly. Um, uh, we're joined here this morning with some very uh, important people in this whole process who are gonna speak uh, with you a little bit. Um, and, you know, it's, a, it, I think, a very critical time in the history of our, in our, uh, in a, of our country and that people, it, when they're really concerned about it, get frustrated and want to know what they can do. And the most important thing, in my opinion, that anyone can do who really wants to be, uh, who's really committed to, uh, to, to voting is to serve on an election board. Um, so let me turn it over to Lauren Christella from the Committee of 70. Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Lauren Christella. I'm the Chief Program Officer of the Committee of 70. I'm also the President of the League of Women Voters of Philadelphia. So wearing both hats today, uh, welcome on behalf of those organizations. Um, it is my honor to introduce Congressperson Mary Gay Scanlon to give some brief remarks. Um, just to say that we are so fortunate to have her here and have her in Congress because of her uh, career of dedication to voting rights and making sure that people are fairly and equally represented. Uh, even in her legal career before joining Congress, uh, heading the, non, uh, the pro bono aspects of her firm, making sure people's voting rights were respected and fighting for children uh, has been a hallmark of her career and she continues to do that in the halls of Congress. So thank you so much. Representative Scanlon, and uh, we'd love to hear from you on this. Okay, well, thank you, Lauren, and um, congratulations to Al Schmidt on his new role um, with Committee of 70. It's really wonderful to have someone who is uh, now nationally known for protecting the right to vote to be heading up such an important organization here in the Philadelphia region. So good morning, everyone. I'm so pleased to join you to talk about the critical job of poll worker service as we honor the life and legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. on uh, King Day of Service. So this year's King Day celebrations um, feel particularly important as once again, we are finding ourselves in the midst of an intense fight to secure voting rights for all Americans. It's fitting that we're gathered here today, not just because of Dr. King's role in advancing the landmark Voting Rights Act of 1965, but because the holiday honors, honoring his legacy has become a day of service and helping protect our democracy, defend the right to vote and have that vote be counted is probably one of the most important acts of service that we have in our country. Um, you know, as Lauren mentioned, my path to Congress is directly connected to the work that I've done over the last 30 or 40 years to secure the right to vote and my belief that there's no more important issue because all change and all issues flow from our ability to choose representatives who reflect the will of the American voters. And if those votes are suppressed or discarded, then the legitimacy of our government is impacted. Over the years, I have been a poll watcher. I served as an election judge at a Philadelphia precinct. I've been on election protection teams and I've recruited and trained people to work at the polls. The work that poll workers do is essential because it's usually at the local level in individual precincts or wards, that's where voters have their primary contact with our election system. It's there that they're either able to cast their ballots or unfortunately, where they can be turned away or become frustrated and, and not vote at all. So poll workers are the first line of defense for ensuring the right to vote. While a poll worker's name isn't on the ballot always, you become the face of that election for people who come to your polling location. And when we've been recruiting and training people to become poll workers, we like them to have a customer service-based approach. So helping people figure out how to vote, 
if there's a, a glitch in the books or something, figuring out how to help them overcome that and ultimately be able to vote. And those positive experiences ultimately help build more trust in our elections, which is essential in a democracy. So you have the opportunity as a poll worker to be an ambassador for our American elections, to help people overcome challenges, whether bureaucratic or physical challenges, and to help educate the public about how safe and effective our election system really is. And this ambassadorship cannot be taken lightly. Just this weekend, the former president pressed members of his party in Pennsylvania to plant more uh, far-right operatives in the Pennsylvania election system in order to impact the counting of votes. While describing why he's placing an emphasis on people running for election boards in 2022, the former president said, and I quote, we have to be a lot sharper the next time when it comes to counting the vote. Sometimes the vote counter is more important than the candidate, end quote. Now, I'll be the first to agree that election workers are essential, but to insinuate that having the the right partisan candidate counting the votes or any other role related to operation of our democratic elections, can, that it can produce a different outcome or a better outcome for one party or another is really disturbing. And that's not the view that we wanna promote here. That kind of mindset and desire to use democratic institutions for personal benefit or power is exactly why it's so important to have people of good character trained and ready to execute the duties of poll workers faithfully. So in the lead up and aftermath of the 2020 presidential election, we've had to confront just how fragile our democracy is and how far some cynical actors will go to maintain power at all costs, regardless of what the will of the people is. Our Commonwealth is the birthplace of our democratic republic. And in some ways it's become ground zero in the battle for the soul of our nation when it comes to ensuring that every American who is eligible to vote is able to exercise that freedom to vote without interference. You know, we've seen a, a continuous assault on voting rights over the last decade in Pennsylvania, whether it's been gerrymandering or um, strict voter ID laws that were projected to disenfranchise over a half million eligible voters. So we need all hands on deck and the poll workers are really the first the first line there. And so we really, really thank everyone who's interested in becoming a poll worker. It's a, a short but intense commitment of time, but it's really, really impactful in your community. So I thank you for your willingness to uphold our democratic system and help ensure that your neighbors are able to exercise their right to vote because nothing's more important. In the early days of our nation, when asked about the type of government that we had formed, Philadelphia's own Ben Franklin said, it's a republic if you can keep it. And now is the time to prove that we can keep it. So thank you again. Thank you for allowing me to speak with you today. It's, it's an amazing experience to work at the polls. I enjoy it um, when I can get out there and I think you'll feel the same way. Thank you, Congresswoman. And thank you for your kind words and your hard work both in the Commonwealth and, uh, and in DC. And also thank you for quoting Ben Franklin as it relates to our democracy rather than Joseph Stalin, which is the, uh, the quote uh, that the former president used about, it's important who counts the votes, not who casts yeah. them. So um, uh, I have the honor of uh, introducing our next guest, uh, someone I know very well. It's uh, City Commissioner Lisa Dealey, who's the chairwoman of the Philadelphia Board of Elections. We've worked together for uh, six years um, through uh, some very difficult times, <laughs> as you can imagine. I know when I first was interested in the office, uh, people said, you know, you're going to be bored being city commissioner. What are you going to do all day or all the other days of the year other than election day? And that couldn't be further from the truth. And no one knows that better than um, Chairwoman Dealey. I have uh, never worked alongside um, uh, someone who is so dedicated to the democratic process, who is so hardworking, both as it relates to customer service and our customers are more than 1 million voters in Philadelphia, uh, and also making sure that the electoral, the, the election operations run smoothly so that no voter is, uh, is kept back from casting their vote, whether it's voting by mail or uh, in, in person. She was elected 
um, like as I said, six years ago, and has really improved the city commissioner's office uh, significantly uh, to the betterment of our of our voters here. So, um, uh, Chairwoman Dealey. Good morning, and thank you, Al. And uh, certainly, congratulations on your uh, new role uh, at seventy. But uh, in addition to congratulating you, the real congratulations goes to seventy for having. Uh, just the insight and the forethought to select somebody that really um, understands elections and will really give uh, just what we need, uh, just your defense and your integrity uh, in an organization such as 70, it just builds it up that much more. Um, so I really can't congratulate 70 enough for their great selection uh, when they chose you. Um, for, I mean, as much as I hate to see you go, uh, I don't know that uh, people really understand. We did work together for a long time, but uh, what we went through in 2020 together, um, it, it was great to have a partner like you uh, in that foxhole uh, during during such a trying time. So uh, I look forward to working with you uh, in your new role uh, and continue to count you as a, a dear friend. Um, and I'm so happy to be here today and to thank the Congresswoman for taking time out of her day to be here also. Uh, you know, we started this morning at the shared food warehouse where we are, are uh, in service, uh, trying to help uh, people that need uh, food and assistance, make sure they get that. Um, but this was actually uh, more important to make sure that people understand that, although today is a beautiful day to recognize the need uh, for all of us to be of service, that service needs to continue and should continue throughout the year. And you know, especially at a time when our democracy is under attack constantly, um, there is no greater way to be of service to your democracy, to your country, to your neighbors um, than being a poll worker. I started as a poll worker at the age of 18. I ran for judge of elections and I was a judge of elections at my, uh, in my polling place in my division for three years until such time as I ran for committee person. Uh, you know, I am somebody who grew up uh, in a polling place. My mother was uh, involved in the elections, my grandfather before her. So I spent every election day um, before I was in school or after school, uh, spinning around in a barber chair, uh, the polling location that uh, our division used to vote at uh, when I was a child. And I can say that when we talk about Philadelphia and we talk about Tasty Cakes and Rocky, uh, the Mummers Parade, things that really are Philly. I uh, will tell you one thing that's really Philly that doesn't really get that much attention is election day. Uh, it's a beautiful day of neighborhood and camaraderie. And for me, you know, you start out and you see a young family and they'll bring in a, a baby and the baby will be uh, in a carrier and they'll put the carrier on the, on the table as they sign in. And then you'll watch through the years as that same baby is uh, tugging on the pant leg uh, of the parent that's behind the curtain. And as the years go on, they're standing outside the curtain, whole, you know, wa waiting for their parents to come out. And then before you know it, uh, they're standing in front of you signing in themselves uh, for their first time voting. It really is an experience. Some people, uh, they bring candy or they bring cookies. They tell the same joke uh, election after election. It's a great day uh, of Philadelphia neighborly affection and a great day to be involved. And it's, it really um, played a significant role in shaping me uh, for this role as, as uh, chairwoman of Philadelphia elections. Uh, certainly a job um, when I first took it, I had no idea um, that we would be where we are today, but it is with um, great humility and great honor that I serve the citizens of Philadelphia in this role. And really, um, I know Al says it all the time, what happens on election day has really less to do with what, what the work that we do and so much to do with uh, the board workers. So um, Philadelphia shares along with the rest of the nation, a great need for board workers. Um, less and less people are, are taking up, that, taking up that, uh, that charge to come in and do that. We need board workers in Philadelphia. Uh, if you are interested in working on an election board, uh, you know I urge you to contact us. Uh, you can go on our website at philadelphiavotes.com um, and you can uh, click the link for election board worker and it'll take you to where you need to be. 
Um, there is a training that you can do either in person or online. Uh, if you have any questions, you can call any of our offices. We're happy to help you, um, but please um, take the time. And if you're already taking the time today to listen to us, I appreciate that. Um, so you'll have some time to make a decision. Uh, we have an election coming up, you know, in May and we need your help. We need you to, um, to help us out and be a poll worker. So thank you so much for the opportunity. I look forward to the discussion. Thank you so much, uh, Chairwoman Dealey, that uh, true words were never spoken. <laughs> um, we feel so strongly about this and we're so thrilled to also have uh, Acting Commissioner, City Commissioner Seth Bluestein with us. Seth, you wanna give a wave? Uh, so that is all to also say, uh, the fantastic people from the Commissioner's Office will be on with us when we go through this uh, presentation and give you the basics of working the polls, all uh, this is the team that can answer all the questions. <laughs> so <laughs> you are in excellent hands with us uh, this morning. And with that, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us and we will get started on the, on the presentation. So hold on one second while I share my screen. And here we go, Poll Worker 101. Okay, so here's what we're going to do today. You'll get, uh, after this brief presentation, you'll have a feel for the job. Uh, you'll be able to ask any questions you might have and be able to make a really informed decision about if this is the way you want to serve your democracy uh, this year, 2022. So a little bit about us. You've heard a lot of talk of the Committee of 70. Um, as I mentioned, I also represent the League of Women Voters of Philadelphia. Combined, we're 218 years old and share the common mission of making sure people uh, who want to cast their vote can cast their vote and that that vote is counted. Uh, so, so these organizations continue to be nonpartisan civic leaders and uh, we're thrilled to be able to provide these services to Philadelphia and its voters uh, each year, every year, certainly around both elections that happen every single year, not just in presidential years. As you've heard repeatedly, democracies, essential workers are poll workers. They're on the front lines and they're here to make sure that uh, voters have their, uh, can, can exercise their franchise, right? And cast their ballot successfully. So we've generated a pretty comprehensive poll worker FAQ. You can find it at that link below on 70.org. We have a whole section if you go to take action and then go into become a poll worker. Uh, tons of resources, and we'll walk through some of them now, but all of the basics. Uh, do I get paid? How do I know if I'm qualified? What if I live in New Jersey and want to volunteer in Philadelphia? You can't. There's other details that we'll go through uh, this morning, but even more available here on 70.org. Some of the basics. So in Philadelphia, we call our voting precincts our divisions. There are 1,703 of them in Philadelphia. That means there's approximately seven to 800 polling places, polling locations. And sometimes uh, I know mine here in South Philly, there's multiple divisions in my polling place, but each division has its own board of election workers. So we're looking for a fully staffed uh, election board. It's about 8,500 people to pull off each and every election in Philadelphia. Uh, so we, have a number of people who step up every year, but they're, we're always just a little bit short. So your interest in serving your community is much appreciated and very needed. Um, so those five people on the election board include the judge of elections. That's like the boss of the polling place, the person who picks up all the materials and assigns the roles and things like that. Um, the majority inspector and minority inspector, there's a clerk and there's a machine inspector. If it's a very busy polling place, there might even be more than one. Um, so some notes about payment. Yes, you get paid. Uh, this is an investment and uh, in, in you are investing your time and resources into making this election work and the city will pay you for that. So the current rate is $120 for judges of election, 115 from machine inspectors. You also get a small stipend, you see there, for uh, taking the uh, official training through the city at philadelphiavotes.com. Um, it will take several months to, to get your payment. That is the process. Um, so we appreciate your patience on that front, but you will get paid. Everyone gets paid. Uh, 
So a little bit about the process and feel free to jump in or to our uh, city commissioners and staff if you'd uh, like to give some color commentary on any piece of this, but the Board of Elections typically makes about 8,000 confirmation calls and sends emails to people who have previously served and those who are elected to serve as Board of Election workers. That's a lot of work, right? So they, they're determining the vacancies that need to be filled. Uh, you might not get your placement as quickly as you, you know, sign up. When you, uh, so it, it's part of a longer process and that's just to say, um, be patient. They are handling a lot of placements and a lot of people who are interested um, and they're not going to necessarily be able to accommodate requests like, can I be placed with a friend? Can I you know, request this partic uh, particular position? So just be aware of that going in. If you'd like to sign up for Philadelphia, you will go to philadelphiavotes.com. You see that right there on the screen. You go to election board officials, this tab on their website, drop down to become a poll worker. And that brings you to this form. This is where you'll sign up. Uh, that's the best way if you are a Philadelphia resident registered to vote in Philadelphia, this is where you sign up to be a poll worker. If you live in a different county, you can go to votespa.com and go through a similar process and you'll be directed to your uh, county for uh, to work in the county where you live. All right. Uh, that is to say, because you can only be <laughs> a poll worker in the county where you're registered to vote. So you want to make sure you can check your registration at any time You can go to votespa.com and do that and update it if necessary. If you've recently moved or you've neglected to, to update your registration, take care of that first before applying to be a poll worker. Um, some things to note, you cannot be a federal, state or city employee and serve as a poll worker. Um, this creates a nice separation between the government that you're electing and, <laughs> and the, the voters, right? This also includes school district employees. So just a, a, an important note there. Um, everyone on election day, all the board workers have to remain politically neutral. So that's being conscious of what you're wearing, how you're talking, no signage, no hats, no buttons, those types of things that indicate your support for a particular party or a particular candidate. And that's also to say that committee people can serve as long as they adhere to that rule too. So we have committee people in Philadelphia, right? There you go. So to apply, you go to that site. Oh, and another thing. So in Philadelphia, we have this fantastic program where 17 year olds can be poll workers. So you're not necessarily registered to vote yet because that happens at 18, but 17 year olds can get involved in the process and it's a phenomenal way to serve their community. Um, typically, most uh, school students have off on election days. So it's, uh, so it's not like you have to cut school to, to participate. And it's a great uh, way to serve your community, get familiar with the process and uh, get involved before you, you actually have that right to vote just yet, right? So there's a special form. There's just a few extra steps that if you're 17 year old, years old that you would have to, to undertake. One of them is to go to philadelphiavotes.com and you download the form that uh, you have to get signed by your principal and your parent or guardian. Uh, and then you also sign it. You can email it to that address right there. And I'll make this presentation available for everyone after. So you have all these links and, and addresses. Um, but you also must attend the training, right? Super easy to do now. It's online. So you can go to training.philadelphiavotes.com and sign up for that. Watch it at your leisure. Take the assessment. And then you're ready to go. So a fantastic way for young people to get involved in our democracy. Some additional notes. So ideally, all the poll workers must live in the division where they work, right? That's what the law says, but there are vacancies. Well, we, we can't fill, the city can't fill all of those spots just with people who live in that neighborhood. So when you sign up, you have to be prepared for maybe being placed in a different part of the city. So they'll try to place you as close to home as possible as to your home division, but there are, is a chance that you could be placed in a different section of the city. You'd have to get yourself there. Uh, in time to help open the polls and all that good stuff. Um, part of that process, there's an official process to fill these vacancies that happens five days before the election for the law. This all happens in uh, Commissioner Dealey and, and Acting Commissioner Bluestein's offices. They take care of all that work. You don't have to worry about it. They will give you your placement and then you're, you're good to go. 
Okay, so that training I mentioned is about an hour long. There's a short assessment at the end. It's pretty straightforward. The, I think the virtual, they're still doing in-personal trainings, less so with COVID. However, I would strongly recommend the virtual training because you can go back and rewatch pieces and slow things down and, and review or write notes in a way that you really can't do in a live, a live session, right? So training.philadelphia votes there. And then the Committee of 70 and League of Women Voters are happy to provide additional info sessions that cover some general election law and election protection because poll workers play an incredibly important role on election protection and making sure the right people are allowed to vote, eligible voters. Uh, we'll cover some COVID safety because that doesn't seem like it's going away. And then we will also cover us in a section as a second session, um, details of the day, special procedures, um, people using provisional ballots, et cetera, things that you might encounter, and then some special uh, circumstances that might not be as common, but you wanna be prepared for. Uh, and then we have, typically we'll also offer a third session in partnership with the city commissioners to just answer your last minute questions. So these happen in the days before the election. Um, we're gonna continue to do that to make sure you feel confident and prepared going into election day. Um, some other resources, your fellow poll workers, they're amazing. And you can tap into their, their expertise uh, two different ways. One, on the job, <laughs> when you get there, people will hopefully be experienced and, and eager to help you get settled into your role. And then also in this Facebook group called the Poll Worker Caucus. So it's a private group. You apply for membership, answer a few questions. I will let you in. And uh, you will have access to the vast resources of the hive mind of, of Philadelphia poll workers. It's a terrific resource. They are quick to answer questions and give tips like um, where one was to wear a fanny pack with extra uh, hand sanitizer and pens and other things and can just have it right there on you during the day. Uh, what kind of sandwiches to pack and, and things like that. So really helpful stuff there. And then another thing to do is to review the guide. So uh, Seth and I worked pretty closely together to uh, revamp the city's training guide. This uh, We worked closely with Stanford's Healthy Election Program. So it's designed in a really user-friendly way. And we had some expert veteran poll workers uh, give us their their years of lend us their years of expertise in developing this fantastic guide, which is now the official guide for the city. So I highly recommend uh, you spend some time. You can download a version of it now that it will be updated ahead of the election to make sure it's 100% accurate given any changes. Um, so just be be aware of that. But by and large, a fantastic place to start. You can review that guide on our website. I can click into that now. Hopefully. Um, this, again, this presentation will be live and I just closed my own presentation. So give me one second. Um, all right, here we go. Back at it, sorry about that everyone. Uh, this is just a sample of the page. When you get access to this, uh, this presentation, you'll see that this is a clickable link that will take you directly to this fantastic guide where you will be able to do all of these, these terrific things to help you prepare for the day. All right, let's walk you through the, the day a bit. Uh, it's a long one, so be prepared. It's not in shifts. When you commit to be a poll worker, you're working the full day. And that means arriving between 6.15 and 6.30 in the morning. And then you immediately go into setup mode. So you set up tables, you check the flow of the space, hang all the required signage. That guide has uh, a visual uh, checklist. So it'll show you examples of those signs and tell you where to hang them. And then you can just go through and check off as you do it. Um, you'll unpack and account for all the materials. There's also an index of all of the materials that come in the judges box, which is really helpful and you'll know what you're missing. You set up the voting machines, mark off social distancing, and then receive additional instructions from the judge of elections, clarify the rules for election day. And then you get to it. So polls open at 7 a.m. That's what you get there early to make sure that you are 
ready to receive that first voter exactly at 7 a.m. Greet voters at the check-in table, verify their name in the poll book. Um, you're gonna help with any specific questions they have, explain how the machines work, and then uh, of course manage social distancing, encourage mask wearing, that type of stuff. So another piece, if you, um, you can be both a bilingual interpreter and a poll worker, that's something that's possible. Um, or you can just, if you have other people who are interested in being bilingual interpreters, spread the word. This is um, a terrific way to serve your community too, so that people who need that um, bilingual interpretation on election day need some, some help casting their ballot, have that support on site. Uh, this, you would just go to interpreter.philadelphiavotes.com to learn more and sign up. The pay is very good <laughs> to do that. And you have to attend a training uh, to, to do that. You can get a certification to be on site with your as a bilingual interpreter too through the city. So uh, another fantastic way to serve and, and they are always needed. Go for it, Seth. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, I just wanted to add in related to the bilingual interpreters that new this year because of the 2020 census, uh, Philadelphia is now going to be providing all materials and services, not just in English and Spanish, but also in Chinese. So it's going to be especially important to uh, volunteer or recruit uh, Chinese language interpreters this election cycle. So we're really looking forward to expanding that operation. And so can you say, you don't have to be like a, an interpreter or translator by training, right? This is per, someone who's fluent in this language and, and willing to serve in this capacity. Is that correct? Yeah, you don't have to be a outside certified interpreter. We do provide training and certification for individuals who wish to serve on the election boards as an interpreter. Awesome, thank you. All right, so now to closing the polls. So you're just the steady stream of uh, voters is coming in all day. These upcoming elections for 2022 are, are primary in May uh, and the general in November will see a lot more voters than certainly we saw in 21. Um, so having an efficient and effective uh, election board and process for your voters is gonna be important to make sure that there's no long lines and that people don't leave those lines uh, and not cast their vote, right? So it could be a late night, hopefully it won't be. Um, polls don't close until the last person who's in line by 8 p.m. has voted. That's an important point. So if you're in line by 8 p.m., you get to cast your vote, even if that takes another hour, right, to get to the front of the line. Um, one of the poll workers will mark that end of the line if they see one forming uh, around eight o'clock. So, um, so that's why we can't say exactly when the, when the night will end. Uh, you will follow all the checklists and procedures. We've provided fantastic ones to, to walk you through shutting down the machines and completing the paperwork. Um, the more legibly you, and completely you fill out the payroll, the more likely you are to get paid uh, quickly or it'll be processed better, more smoothly. Yes, Commissioner Dealey. I just wanted to point out uh, another tool that we provide is every uh, division is provided with a cell phone. So if you get stumped during the day or if there's a question that you, you really can't answer or if you just need some reassurance, uh, we do provide a cell phone to every division in the city uh, for you to uh, get in contact with somebody that can give you the answer you're looking for. Terrific, it's an important point. And um, all of the important phone numbers, depending on what your issue is, are listed in that guide and they're in the judge's uh, box too. So you'll, you'll know exactly who to call if a machine breaks or if there's other issues that, uh, that you need to address during the day. Uh, so then you uh, wrap up the day, you follow the procedures, you return everything where it needs to be returned and that's it. That's, that's your day of being a poll worker. Uh, this sounds like a lot, it's a long day. It's a lot of, uh, a, a, you're on the whole time, more or less. Uh, there may be lulls and things, but you're enabling democracy to exist in the United States. And that certainly seems worth uh, you know, two long days a year. Elections can't happen unless we have enough poll workers to make it happen. And those shortages of poll workers or poorly trained poll workers mean long lines and other issues for voters. So you are making sure people can exercise their right to vote. And in a democracy, there's no more important cause. 
So thank you for, for stepping up in that way. As I mentioned, uh, join the Poll Worker Caucus. It's a great place. It, it's active year round. So people are preparing and sharing resources and ideas uh, and asking questions. It's a, it's a terrifically active community. Again, if you want to sign up, you're going to go to philadelphiavotes.com and then click that election board uh, tab and you can sign up for it to be a poll worker. If you happen to be in another county or want to encourage friends and family to vote, have them go to votespa.com. And thank you. I'm happy to take any questions people might have. Uh, if anyone on the call has a question. And I yes, want to thank uh, again. Oh, I sure. I have a question. Um, unfortunately, I just discovered that I can't be a poll worker because I work for the School District of Philadelphia. Is there anything else I can do? You can volunteer for election protection work. That's another great way uh, to serve the community on election day. The Committee of 70 also has a fantastic resource uh, for teachers to share with their students and encourage them to be election ambassadors. So you can participate in that program with your students and encourage them to go out and help voters um, check their polling place, check their registration, make sure they have what they need, their first time voter, um, that they have the proper ID, things like that. So that's another great way to serve. But I would definitely consider volunteering for that um, election protection function. So that's the 866 R vote. Um, the Lawyers Committee runs a pretty comprehensive operation uh, that will be much needed in 22 and beyond. So thank you for attending today and, and hopefully and spread the word that we still need poll workers outside of the, the school community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other any other questions? All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for attending today. Like I said, 70.org, philadelphiavotes.com have plenty of resources to help you uh, as you make up your mind and decide to be a poll worker and then to train you and inform you as you prepare to serve. I want to thank uh, the city commissioner's office, both acting commissioner Bluestein and chairwoman Lisa Dealey for giving us their time on election day and uh, on election day on <laughs> King Day of Service. And I, uh, I appreciate that. And to our new CEO and former commissioner Al Schmidt, thanks for doing this as well. Um, again, if you have any questions, 70.org, you can find my email there. Happy to, to follow up individually. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Lord. Thank you.